So today we will learn about synchronous DRAMs, SDRAM. SDRAM is commonly used name for various kinds of dynamic RAMs that are synchronized with processor clock. So if you have a dynamic RAM which is synchronized with the processor's clock, then that is called as synchronous DRAM. Now the structure of this uh, synchronous DRAM is so much similar to what we learned in asynchronous DRAM. These are the few uh, circuits that we have. Instead of the column address latch that you had in an asynchronous DRAM, here you have a column address counter. Similarly, the output of the uh, send circuit, it is connected to a latch. And these latches are connected to two registers, data input register and data output register. So let's see it here. We have here we have an internal organization of a SD RAM synchronous dynamic random access memory. So as you see, you have a row address latch, but instead of the column address latch, here you have a column address counter. Now we have this counter here because if you wanted to uh, read the data from the successive columns, you can make use of the column address counter and a clock signal. So if you read one particular row, then the successive columns can be read using the counter information and the clock signal. So let's uh, see the address lines. From the address lines upon the, uh, upon the RAS signal, that is row address strobe signal, that is an active low signal. When we have this particular signal as low, then the row address, the higher order bits, they are latched to the row address latch. And the row address latch is connected to a decoder. What will the decoder do? Decoder will select one of these rows. So that particular row is selected. That means all the cells in that particular row, it is stored in a read or write latch. So the, all the cells are stored in this particular latch. Next, when we, when we apply a CAS, that is column address strobe signal, the lower address, column address, that is given to the column address counter. And this column address counter will provide the, uh, the input to the column decoder and the column decoder will select one of the columns in that particular row. So here a row is selected. In that row, there are different columns. So one particular column's information is selected. And that data is given to a data output register. And from the data output register, the data is given to the data bus. Okay. Uh, so here you have a, a refresh counter. Uh, since it is a dynamic random access memory, we have to keep refreshing the cell again and again. Otherwise, the content will be lost. So that will be taken care of by this refresh counter. So let's see the read and write operations again. Now for read operation, the row address is applied first. And in response to the column address, the data present in the latches for the selected column, they are transferred to the data output register. So let's see here. See here. The row is selected, one row is selected, all the information in that particular row that is stored in the latch. The second column is selected. So in that particular row, you have different columns. In that, one particular column is selected and that data is given to the data output register and the data output register will place the data to the data bus. That is the read operation. So the data is available on the data bus. Now let's see the write operation. Here the row address is applied first and in response to the column address, data present in the data bus is made available to the latch through the data input register. So first the row address is selected and then the column address is selected. Whatever data is there in the data bus, it is placed to the data input register. And from the data input register, the data is stored in one in the particular uh, latch. And from the latch, it is stored to the particular cell which is selected using the row and column address. So the data is written to the particular cell. This is a read operation and the write operation in a SDRAM. Next is burst mode transfer. 
So this burst, what do you mean by burst? Burst is the collection of words that is called as burst. So as we learned in asynchronous DRAM, we learned a concept called as fast page mode. Okay? It is very similar to the fast page mode. As in fast page mode, after the column address is applied, the data from successive column addresses are read out or written into. In same way, burst operation of different lengths can be specified. So here, you just have to select a particular row and then once the column address is given, in burst mode transfer, the successive uh, columns are selected and they are either read out or they are written into. So this uses the same block transfer capability of the fast page mode. So here, the burst mode transfer is mainly used if you wanted to read the successive columns in a particular row. So for this, the control signals required are provided internally by a column counter and a clock signal. So the column counter will uh, give the information as in how many columns has to be successfully read and this happens in every clock cycle. So uh, the CAS signal need not be generated externally. Before actually what happened is we used to provide CAS signals uh, to show the next, to point the next column. But here, since you are giving the information in the column counter, we don't require a CAS signal again. So the column counter information and the clock signal will help to read the successive columns information. Uh, so a new data is available in the data line every clock cycle. So on every clock cycle, a new data is available on the data line. All these operations are triggered during the rising edge of the clock. Now we have, we also have a built-in refresh circuit tree and a refresh counter as we have seen in the internal organization diagram. So during a refresh operation, the content of the cells are refreshed because in dynamic RAM it has to be periodically refreshed otherwise the content will be lost. But it happens without changing the content on the latch. We know that the sensor right circuit uh, sorry, uh, the cell is connected to the latches, so the, the information in the latches is not changed, but the content of the cells are always refreshed using uh, a refresh circuitry. Then uh, this provides the address of the rows that are selected for refreshing. So we just have to provide the address of the row and then uh, the whole row is refreshed. So that is done by a refresh counter. So each row must be refreshed at least every 64 nanoseconds. So let's see a SDRAM timing diagram. This timing diagram is for a burst read of length 4. So burst read of length 4 means we are going to read 4 bytes of data. Okay, Continuously we are going to read 4 bytes of data. Uh, and these are stored in successive columns. In a row, in successive columns, these data are stored. So it is a read operation here. So obviously, uh, this read signal has to be high because R, for R, we have to have a value 1. So that is a high signal here. Now, upon giving an RAS signal, which is an active low signal, upon giving an RAS signal, what happens? The row address is latched into a row address latch. It takes two, mem two uh, cycles, two memory cycles uh, to store the particular row address in a row address latch. So that is why we have, we take two clock cycles here. Next, we are providing a CAS, column address stroke signal, that is an active low signal. When this is given, that means the particular column address is stored in the column address counter. But here, it takes one memory cycle for the column address to be stored in the column address counter. And in the column address counter, we also give the information of uh, the burst read operation, which is of length 4. Now after one memory cycle, after giving the column address, after that, after one uh, memory cycle, the first byte of information is placed in the data bus. Okay. 
and on successive clock cycles. This happens in the uh, rising edge of the clock cycle. First byte of data is placed in the data bus. Now where is the second information? The second byte of data is there in the successive column location. So during the second column, uh, sorry, second uh, rising edge of the clock, the data is stored, uh, the data will be available in the data bus. Similarly, D2, the next information is available on the data bus in the next clock cycle's rising edge. Then D3 is the fourth, info, fourth byte of information that is stored in the data bus during the next clock cycle. So this is the burst read operation and here the, uh, it, the length is 4. That means 4 bytes of information and these uh, 4 bytes of information is stored in successive column locations. So first we are giving the row address. After two uh, memory cycles, then we are uh, giving a column address. After one memory cycle, the first byte of information is placed in the data bus. So here, the row address is latched under the control of an RAS signal. The memory takes about two to three cycles to activate the selected row. After that, the column address is latched under the control of CAS signal. After a delay of one cycle, the first set of data bits it is placed on the data line. So SD RAM automatically increments the column address to access the next three sets of bits in the selected row placed on the data line in successive column, uh, clock cycles. So this happens because we have a column counter. There we are giving a count as four. So the successive four column value, uh, the information will be placed on the uh, data bus. Now, uh, a good indication of performance of a memory is given by two parameters. One is latency. So latency is the amount of time it takes to transfer a word of data to or from the memory. So now we have, if we have a block transfer, what do you mean by latency? Latency is used to denote the time it takes to transfer the first word of data. Let's look into the previous diagram where we have an access cycle begins with the assertion of a RAS and the first word is transferred five cycles later. So here the assertion of a read operation, it happens using an RAS draw. That is where this read operation starts. But where do you get the first data? You get the first data available after 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 cycles. On the 5th cycle, you have the first data available. But this operation was started using an RAS signal. After that, after on the 5th, clock cycle you are getting the information in the data bus. So that is called as latency. It is the amount of time it takes to transfer a word of data to or from the memory. So here in that diagram 5 clock cycles is the latency. Similarly the second parameter is bandwidth. Bandwidth is a number of bits or bytes that can be transferred in one second. So it's basically the measure how much it is basically to measure how much time is needed to transfer an entire block of data and this depends on the speed of the memory access as the speed increases the number of bits that is transferred in one second increases it also depends on the transfer capability of the link if the speed of the bus of that particular link that is the bus if that is more again the number of bits that you can transfer in one second that will be increased it also depends on the number of bits that can be accessed in parallel. So parallelly, if you can access so many information, that means a, a, a lot of bits can be transferred in one second. So bandwidth is not determined solely by the memory. It is a product of the rate at which the data are transferred and the width of the data bus. If you have a data bus which transfers 8 bits at a time, then the speed will be Accordingly, so if you have a data bus which can transfer more number of data at a time, then the uh, number of bits that is transferred in one second will increase. That is, the bandwidth will increase. So these are the two parameters uh, that will decide the good indication of uh, uh, the performance of the memory.
Next we have DDR SD RAM. DDR stands for Double Data Rate SD RAM. So we have a standard SD RAM, whatever we have learned so far. It performs all the actions on the rising edge of the clock cycle. That is what we learned. For in the rising edge of the clock cycle, a particular action is performed. Now here we have a double data rate SD RAM. That is, the tr it transfers the data on both the edges of the clock. Rising edge, similarly the falling edge of the clock. Here the latency is same as the standard SD RAM, but the bandwidth is doubled. Okay, so. Uh, if you have a cell array which is organized in two banks, it is organized in two banks and each can be accessed separately. So consecutive words of given block are stored in different banks. So if you are storing uh, the zeroth word in this bank and first word in this bank and you can access these two banks separately, such interleaving of words will allow simultaneous access of two words that are transferred on successive edges of the clock. So this zero, this word can be transferred during the rising edge and this consecutive word which is there in the second bank, this is transferred during the falling edge. So since we are using both the edges of the clock, here when we are using both the edges of the clock, we call it as double data rate because the bandwidth is doubled. That much information is transferred. So in standard SDRAM, only in the rising edge of the clock, the data was transferred. Here, in both the edges of the clock, the data is transferred. Uh, DD SDRAMs and standard SDRAMs, they are most efficiently used in applications where block transfers are prevalent. Example, whenever you want to transfer a data between the main memory uh, to the processor cache, we go for uh, SD RAMs or DDR SD RAMs.